Good morning. I'd like to call the uh, Board of Supervisors meeting of October 8, 2013 to order. Roll call, please. Supervisor Burns. Here. Supervisor Carroll. Here. Supervisor Elias. Presente. Supervisor Miller. Here. Chairman Valadez. Let the record show that Chairman Valadez is absent. All other members are present, and Supervisor Bronson will chair the meeting. Uh, Madam Chair. Supervisor. I uh, just wanted to note that uh, we're certainly glad to have you back with us today. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be back. Um, now, we will rise for the invocation to be given by um, Pastor La Teresa M. Jester of Gideon Mission Baptist Church to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Supervisor Miller. Please rise. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. God, we pause for a moment to say thank you for who you are. And then, God, it is this your servant's request that you will bless these, God, your leaders that have been chosen by these, your people. God, we pray that you will lead them, God, as they lead these, your people, that the county will be better, God, based on their leadership. We trust them, God, that based on who they are, that we will be better as we continue to trust them and their leadership. We trust you now. In God's name we pray, amen and amen. Um, now I'd like to move to um, the addendum agenda. We have a presentation. Oh, we have our dog. I forgot the. Oh, I am so sorry. Pause for pause. I forgot to pause. Shame on me. <laughs> well, Forrest, I apologize to you. You get extra treats as a result. <laughs> Officer Bowden. That's a fair deal. It really is. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, this is this is Forrest. Forrest is a, a dog awaiting for ad adoption with our facility. He arrived uh, July 25th of this year, so he's been waiting quite some time. Uh, right now, we're running some promotions where dogs that have been there for over two weeks are, are going for no adoption fee, just the licensing fee. Uh, other dogs go for $60 right now, and that includes their alteration to be spayed or neutered, their microchip, and their rabies vaccination. Um, I was noticing this morning when I went through the kennels uh, how we have some really fine looking dogs and then we have a, a very interesting group of, of misfit dogs um, with all with something very, very unique and, and unusual about them. And, and, it, and it made me think about, I have a daughter and I have plenty of pets of my own and it made me think about the characteristics that we fall in love with, with the, those that are around us. And, and this dog, for instance, just a, a funny little thing about him. is. His left ear is just slightly misshapen from the right ear. And it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't affect his life in any way. But it's one of those unique little characteristics that makes him him. Um, and my heart just, just went out to the dogs that are in there that sometimes they get overlooked because they don't fit uh, a, a cookie cutter mold that is set in pe some people's minds for what they want for a pet. We have a lot of really fantastic animals that by no fault of their own are in circumstances where they're homeless. And they, they can't go out and get a job to, to achieve a, a higher income to afford a better home for themselves. They don't have those options. They are kind of at the mercy of all of us. So um, unfortunately, many of them are in that situation. The best we can do is to try to help those that are in it out of it. 
and Forrest is a great example. He's been waiting patiently, a perfectly fine dog, perfectly nice. He's never done anything that we've seen to um, prevent him from having a home. There just doesn't seem to be a home available right now. So if you or someone you know has got space in your home, I invite you to please come down and take a look at some of the wonderful, wonderful uh, members of our community that are, are waiting a home. And I, and I have to applaud uh, Supervisor Carroll. He took his third dog into his house recently. This is him. What I find particularly charming about this is the fact that so many people set their numbers at two. Two dogs is plenty. That's enough. That's, that's all I can handle. Two kids. Three's, three's enough. Three's, three's the charm, though, isn't it really? I guess so. So he's opened his home <laughs> and set a great example where it's the more the merrier. So yeah, and he's I, a good guy. I certainly don't um, promote people taking in more than they can handle, but if, if you've got the, the means in the room in your home and, and in your heart and in your family to take in a creature that, that needs a little bit of extra assistance, then please, please consider it. Um, again, Forrest has been waiting since the end of July, and if you think about you know, yourself, if you're waiting somewhere, just waiting, waiting for a home to open up for that long. It's, it's amazing that he can still get up and, and smile and act like it's just a fresh, brand new day every day and, and just happy to greet you and happy to get out of his kennel and happy to just get some attention. So again, please come on down. Plenty of cats, too, if you're not a dog person. Um, Forrest is waiting. He'll be uh, available. Our, our center will be open from noon until 7 on weekdays from 10 to 5 on weekends. We'll also be out for the Tucson Meet Yourself out here. Right in the grassy there. lands out here this weekend. Um, I believe we're going to be set up in front of the, the Joel something library. Joel there we go. We'll be set up there um, for all three days. And then the following weekend, uh, there's a home show that's going on that will be at that as well. So plenty of opportunities if you can't get over to our shelter itself, but you happen to be at one of these events where you can take a peek at, at some of the dogs that are available and anxiously awaiting an open home for them to move into. So I appreciate your time and again Supervisor Carroll. Thank you. I, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to add on. This this uh, dog's name is Simon and uh, I paid fifteen dollars for Simon. Simon's a great deal because you know he's over four years old like I, I would he's, imagine. Yeah he's your, two he's two at guest, least. But he's fifteen dollars, right? He's, yeah, no adoption fee, just the license fee. This is national Adopt a Shelter Pet Month. Yesterday we opened the expansion of the Green Valley uh, Animal League of Green Valley. They've done another 5,600 square feet. They're a no-kill shelter. Uh, sadly, uh, many dogs like Simon and our friend here go without home. Simon was in the kennels from September 24th until I liberated him on St. Francis Day uh, the 4th. So he had had quite a run in there, and uh, I just want to say, once I got him home, gave him a, a haircut and a sweater and some Perrier and some beef jerky. That's just not a sweater. That's a hoodie. You know? <laughs> this is a hip dog. You know? That's what we got there. He, uh, it had to cover up his bad haircut in the beginning, but now that it's grown <laughs> out, he's grown used to it. He really likes it. And uh, I found out he does uh, loop-de-loops. He does barrel rolls. He can uh, roll on the ground and uh, beg for food besides give your paw. So it's a amazing how many tricks, once they're out of the shelter, they come back to life. And uh, once you get them in your home, it takes just a few days for them to kick into to, to a natural uh, find for you. And who rescued who? This guy rescued us. We're empty nesters. We had plenty of room. Thanks, Officer Bowden, for all you do to promote dogs. Thank you. Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I was going to add that I was speaking with Mike Slaney of the Council for the uh, <laughs> Pima County Industrial Development Authority, and he agreed to uh, pay the $15 for this dog to make sure it gets adopted. And I was also going to uh, mention to my good friend, Pastor Jester, that uh, if oh. there's anyone there in your congregation who's lonely and needs a pet, please talk to him about adopting uh, this dog or any of the animals at, at uh, Pima County Animal Care or, or coming down on, on uh, the weekend here to Tucson Meet Yourself. Uh, and uh, we'd be glad to help them out so that they're able to find a little companionship. We all need that in our, in our lives. I know that you know several times uh, I've been moved out to the dog house and uh, <laughs> it, it is nice to have company. Uh, I would just say that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you.
Thank you, officer. Okay, moving on. I'm, again, we're moving out of order, going to the addendum agenda, addendum one, uh, item one, presentation proclamation for National T Latino AIDS Awareness Day. What's the pleasure of the board? I move the item. Second. Motion is a second to approve. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, Supervisor Elias, would you do the presentation? To, I think Alethea Doe and Daisy Rodriguez Patel, are they? It, there they are in the audience. If you want to come forward. Good morning. I'm going to read this proclamation in a moment, but um, this is the 11th annual. Um, National uh, Latino AIDS Awareness Day. And uh, this is a group of people all over the world who have dedicated themselves to eliminating stigma, preventing the spread of HIV, <clears throat> and standing strong with those folks who currently have the HIV AIDS virus. Um, we all need to stand together in our fight uh, against AIDS, against HIV, and uh, help people understand the difficult road that people who are real face and how we can prevent the spread of HIV and AIDS. Uh, this year, uh, our celebration is in particular honor <clears throat> of a county employee who passed away at one of our fundraisers um, during this season of NLAD. His name was Christian Barco. He was a fine man. He was a hard worker and a true believer in America and in all the good things that we have here. And because of that, he was a dedicated activist uh, in trying to find a way out of the mess that is the HIV AIDS uh, situation that we face here, not just in the county, not just in the state, but in our country and in the world. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and read this, and then I'm going to ask one of you guys to talk about our event coming up uh, next week. And uh, anything else you'd care to add to this mix? By the way, that was really hard to do. <clears throat> Whereas, Pena County will join more than 1,000 institutions and 350 government entities across the United States, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands to celebrate the accumulation of Hispanic Heritage Month by observing the 11th Annual National Latino AIDS Awareness Day. Whereas the National Latino AIDS Awareness Day is a strategic effort to raise the visibility of the HIV AIDS crisis with Latino communities and to help promote and sponsor prevention activities including counseling and testing. Whereas HIV AIDS continues to impact the lives of people of all ages living and working in Pima County. And whereas our event in Pima County is sponsored by a coalition of local agencies, including Southern Arizona AIDS Foundation, the Pima County Board of Supervisors, District 5, Cope Community Services Incorporated, Pima County Health Department, Tucson Interfaith HIV AIDS Network, Pima Community College West Campus, and the University of Arizona's Peterson Clinic. Now therefore be it resolved that the Pima County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaims Tuesday, October 15, 2013 to be National Latino AIDS Awareness Day and encourages all Pima County residents to get involved in the fight to end the spread of AIDS and HIV and to help improve the lives of those living with it. Passed and adopted this eighth day of October 2013. I would also add the AIDS Walk is uh, this Sunday right out here in back of the uh, beautiful Pima County Courthouse. Please feel free to join us all on Sunday morning uh, for the AIDS Walk. Please. Good morning. My name is Daisy Rodriguez Patel. I work at Pima Community College West Campus. And this year I'm honored to be one of the co-chairs for this event. 
Um, I also have with me Alethea Doe, and she'll fill in whatever gaps that I miss. Um, but on Monday, October 14th at Pima Community College West Campus, we are going to have a resource fair. So this is really a good opportunity for you to come to um, our college and also learn a little bit more about the AIDS epidemic and just learn more about health in general. And our main event is going to be on Tuesday, October 15th at the El Casino Ballroom. This is a free event and some of you look like students and we will feed you dinner. So this is not only a great way for you to get a free meal, but to also become a little bit more educated and knowledgeable and aware of HIV and AIDS, um, not only in the Tucson community, but in the United States. Um, so, Alethea, would you like to add anything? That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, with AIDS Walk, though, um, I work at Southern Arizona AIDS Foundation, so if you are interested in doing the AIDS Walk, they will have a booth all weekend for pre-registration um, and check-in as well. So feel free to come to that. They also have tons of information. We'll also be giving out free barriers as well as information on stuff. And uh, I should also add that the event on Tuesday will be a really nice event. We have some nice entertainment. Uh, we have some great speakers lined up and, and free food uh, that is being put together uh, by the folks over at Casa Maria. Some nice virria, rice and beans and tortillas. So please feel welcome to join us. That Again, the public is welcome. It's a free event. Please come out and support. Um, we are also on Facebook, so if you want to find out more about us, um, wh where should they go to? NLAD Tucson. So NLAD, N-L-A-A-D Tucson, and again, it's Tuesday, October 15th at 530. We invite you to spread the word and invite others to come. We would love to see you there. So thank you very much um, for this opportunity and for the proclamation. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I appreciate. Supervisor Carroll. Thank you. Madam Chair, I appreciate, uh, of course, uh, this chance to say um, glad to have uh, members of the community here for the proclamation this morning. But I also want to remind people that are out there that the AIDS Walk has now been relocated from the University Mall, where it has been over the years, to downtown. This will be the first year here. So if you're telling your friends or if you're listening at home, this is the second year it is downtown. Please don't go to the University Mall that Sunday morning. Thank you. And where is the quilting? I know they have. Um, is that going to be at the library, or where is that? Located? The quilt event will also be here at the end of the walk. We'll unveil the quilts, and there'll okay. be lots of community members who do that. And, and, you know, the quilts are made by people in remembrance of friends, loved ones, uh, and people in general who we've lost to this epidemic. And so... Um, there's a lot of meaning and a lot of heartfelt thought that goes into those quilts, and, and they're very interesting to take a look at. So even if you're here a little early at Tucson Meet Yourself because you just can't live without getting that, you know, early morning hero at the Greek um, booth, then uh, stop by and take a look at those quilts too. Thank you. Um, we have one executive session item. Uh, Mr. Straub, I believe... Uh, that we that's been canceled or do we still have it yes madam chair members of the board there's no need to uh, to, to go forward to this item uh, the assessor's withdrawn his consent to our representation and I need both to proceed so uh, and the matter is essentially moot at this point okay all right having uh, that piece of information let's move on then to the regular agenda uh, we are Board of Supervisors sitting as other boards, the Flood Control District Board, items five and six, what, five and six, what's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chairman, I move item number five, riparian habitat mitigation. Second. Motion and a second uh, for item five, riparian habitat mitigation. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item six. Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll go ahead and move item six. It's a contract uh, for uh, $3 million with the Ashton Company, uh, Granite Construction Company, and KE&G, amendment number one. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number six under contracts, Blood Control District Board. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to the consent calendar, call to the public. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address us on any of the items on the consent calendar as amended? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? 
Madam Chairman. Supervisor Miller. Um, I would like to pull, um, move to pull item 20 from the consent calendar for a separate discussion and vote. Second. Motion and a second to move, pull item 20 uh, and vote on separately. If there are no objections, motion carries. What's pleasure of the board on item 20? Um, Madam Chairman, one of the things that I would like to ask about prior to the vote is, have the surrounding neighbors been notified regarding this item? It appears that there was a, um, an, a, a on this title, there was uh, the ability to put a road across this property, and they're calling this a cloud on the parcel, and the owner has applied to get this removed. I just wondered, is there any public notification that is required when we do remove a, um, an, I, a, an easement from a property for a road? Um, Ms. Lesher, do you have, or anyone in staff can answer, Mr. Bernal? I do not. Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, uh, we do not ordinarily contact adjoining property owners, but certainly we can undertake that in this case. If you choose to continue this item, we'll do that. Ms. Ms. Supervisor Carroll. Madam Chair, and uh, you know, Mount Lemon is filled with uh, tough old plats that uh, need sometimes to be amended. Obviously, Mount Lemon was built off of mining claims that evolved into uh, neighborhoods, and there are many issues like this that come up. It's not routine that we go through the process of notifying neighbors. It has been worked out through uh, our own departments and the quit claim, quit claim deed uh, is going to be, um, I'm sure, looked at uh, by those departments for its legality. So I'd just as soon uh, move. We can get your answer for it uh, if you'd like later, but uh, usually things hold uh, held up today would continue to put pressure on the, the process for Barbara Ann Guyton to clear the title. So just thank you very much. Is uh, there a motion interest. regarding this item one way or the other? I'd like to make a substitute motion. I uh, think to, there uh, wasn't a motion on the floor. Then yet. I'd make a motion to go ahead and move the quit claim deed for this, this morning's meeting uh, for Barbara Ann Guyton to clear a cloud on her property at 11253 East Globe on Mount Lemon. This is a District 4 property, and this has happened many times on Mount Lemon. It's certainly routine. Is there a second? I'll second the item for discussion. Um, Supervisor Chair. Miller, I, I didn't understand your concern, so if you could please repeat it, I, right. I would appreciate my, it. My concern is that the neighbors in the surrounding neighborhood haven't been notified about this and that it would be proper to notify them that this easement is going to be removed. Um, whether it's holding something up or not, it's been there since the 70s is my understanding. So is there something, if, they, if there's something emergency that's being held up, but I, I don't object to something being removed as long as the neighbors have been properly notified that this is being removed. Mr. Carroll, uh, do you know if so by no, chance... I'm sure that, that just the routine notification has occurred to... Uh, this to, is an easement, so this is transportation related? What type of an easement is it? A, do we know the type of easement? It's a, it's a housekeeping it a art item that obviously they've brought through through the assessor or the transportation department, real properties. Sure. Not Madam, familiar Madam enough Chair. with the case, but I do know these are routine. Mr. Bernal. Madam Chair, I think Supervisor Carroll is correct. The, the, the description here is that it's a it's a reservation for road purposes on oh, this so deed. It's so. so it's not being used as essential. Okay, got it. Okay, there's a motion and a second on the on the floor. Is there a further discussion? Let me call the question. Are there let's do a roll call. Supervisor Carroll. Aye. Supervisor Elias. Aye. Supervisor Miller. No. Supervisor Bronson. Aye. Motion carries. What's the pleasure of the board with the remainder of the consent calendar? Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. Uh, if no one else has any items that they want to pull, I'll go ahead and move uh, the remainder of consent as amended. as amended. Second. Motion and a second to approve the remainder of consent as amended. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. 
Moving on to county administrator, I want to note that uh, we have a new county administrator. <laughs> Miss <laughs> no. um, Lesher is uh, um, sitting in for uh, Mr. Huckleberry, who is in Washington at this point. Um, so, item nine, county administrator. Now, the funny thing about that comment, supervisor, was that it made Chris Straub blush. <laughs> 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 I go. <laughs> I'll go ahead and move uh, item number nine on the regular agenda, classification and compensation. This is uh, a position for a new classification in the IT department. Second. There's a motion and a second. Um, I do have one question. Uh, I'm going to support this, but um, as you know, the current IT director is retiring, I think, at the end of this week. And my concern or question that I have is that we're creating a new classification prior to bringing on a new um, IT director, and I'm wondering if this is a little premature. It's just by way of comment. I'll call the question now. Are there any objections? No. Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to Industrial Development Authority, items 10 and 11, what's pleasure, yeah. and resolutions uh, 2013, 87, and 88, uh, what's pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. I'd like to move the Industrial Development Authority item 10, resolution number 2013-87, and item 11, resolution dash, uh, number 2013-88. These are not in Pima County, but it's also routine that we sometimes do projects in Maricopa or other counties when they, in turn, will then give us the authority to do projects here as they crawl through the pipeline. So thank you, Mr. Slaney, for being here. Those are that's my motion. Motion and a second to approve items 10 and 11 and resolutions 2013, 87, and 88. Are there objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to development services, final plat with assurances, item 12. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chairman. Um, Supervisor I'd like Miller. To, uh, move to approve uh, item 12, final plat with assurances, P. 1213-0111. Is there a second? I'll second the motion in developmental services. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, the motion and a second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to transportation, items 13 and 14. What's the pleasure of the board? I'd move the item number, oh boy, P1212-319 and P12TR000. Four zero Travel Plaza Way for road maintenance and project acceptance. And item 14? And item 14 as well in New Tucson, P1204-36 and P12TR00053, Unit 5, Phase 1, Lots 26.3 through 3.11. Second. Motion and a second to approve items 13 and 14. Discussion, objections, hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to hearings, um, item 15 has been continued till 10 15th, uh, till next week, 10 15, uh, 2013. Uh, we're moving now to franchise license and permits, item 16 through 18. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us on these items at this time? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? Madam, Madam Chair. Supervisor Miller. Um, I'd like to move to close the public hearing and approve items 16, 17, and 18, fireworks permits, extension of permits, patio permit, and extension of premises patio permit for item 18. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second to, to close public hearing and approve items 16, 17, and 18. Discussion, objections, hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to the addendum agenda. Uh, the executive session has been canceled. We're now on item four, um, county administrator, public safety, interoper communication project signature authority, and resolution 2013-89. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. Under county administrator, I'd move uh, resolution number 2013-89 regarding the Pima County Wireless Integrated Network, the cooperative. Is there a second? Second. 
Motion and a second to approve item four in resolution 2013-89. Discussion? Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to community services, employment and trading, training, item five, grant application and resolution 2013-90. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chairman. Supervisor I move, Miller. I move to approve resolution number 2013-90. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve item five, grant application and resolution 2013-90. Discussion, objections, hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to contracts and awards, community services, employment and training, items six, seven, and eight. What's the pleasure of the board on these items? Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. Under community services, employment and training, I'd like to move items six, seven, and eight, Tucson Urban League for $47,135.25, DK Advocates, Inc. for $46,025.25, and Literacy Connects, Amendment Number 1, Contract Amount, 32000 even. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve item 6 through 8. Discussion? Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We're now back to hearings. Board of Supervisors, unfinished business, uh, appeal of a review officer's decision. Staff report. Madam Chairman, members of the board, this is an appeal by uh, the property owner for tax parcel 116-16069A uh, for a classification as class three primary residence. The property uh, is owned by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mena and the property is, uh, uh, is now occupied by his daughter. At the time of the original appeal, I had ruled that the property would not qualify for um, primary resident status because the, uh, there was no indication or pr uh, evidence provided that a family member was residing in the property. That information has now been provided, so I would think it would be appropriate to classify this as a Class III uh, residential primary residence. Thank you. Could I have a motion to that effect from the floor? So, um, yes, then I would make a motion in support of the review officer's decision, which is now that uh, uh, it is, in fact, a primary residence of the owner. Second. Class three. Okay. Class there's, three, correct. Uh, there's a motion and a second to um, classify Uphold. this property as a legal class three for the tax year 2013. Is there any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We're now at call to the audience. Um, we have one speaker, Keith Vine Hannigan. And you have three minutes. Name and address for the record. Welcome all. My name is Keith Van Heinegan. I'm a Tucson resident. We, the Tucson Tea Party, started on 4-15-2009, right in the plaza behind us. We started to fight taxation without representation. We also were started to help fight Obamacare, as it is the takeover of the nation's health care system and the largest tax ever passed in our country's history. See, we have many problems that we've witnessed, scandals beyond belief. They go from the IRS attacking the Tea Party from the FBI to the Department of Homeland Security, the corrupt DOJ and their handling of the new Black Panther voter intimidation case. It goes to the EPA, which shuts down farms, mining, energy, resources, thereby corrupting and denigrating our system, the American system, capitalism. We have problems when we elect Supreme Court justices who do not recuse themselves from Obamacare, yet pass it as a huge tax, changing what it initially was put before them as. That is unconstitutional. Then we have the NSA surveillance of each and every American citizen. I have family 
that works in intelligence. I know what they're talking about. Maybe you all don't. They're just a few of the over 250 scandals and clear corruptions that have happened over the last four and a half years. These are cover-ups that the mass media that will not rise for the Pledge of Allegiance behind me cover up on a regular basis. There are two ways to kill a country. One is by the sword. The other is through debt. $17 trillion in obvious debt. $5 trillion in government handouts to Wall Street in the last four years. $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities of Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. Your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will not thank you. We are led by Harry Reid and Obama into a debt crisis and a ceiling, debt ceiling debate. Well, they haven't passed a budget in four years. And with all these scandals, how can we trust them? We, the people, are not pleased, be it Democrat or Republican. Let the Constitution stand. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address us at call to the audience? If not, without objection, this meeting stands adjourned.